Thanks, Silver. I'll see if the folks mind. I put your trunk in your room, Miss Alice. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, Red, how about the new cook? He's over in the shack. Uh, you better tell him to get unpacked and get to work. The boys are yelling for grub after batting it for a month. Sure will. Dad improved the place a lot. But it's still the same old Circle B, isn't it, Jill? <laughs> I know you still love it, Alice. I guess people just don't forget the good things they had when they were kids. But the best of the good things is gone. My father. And yours. Let's go in. So she finally got out here, huh? Yeah. But when she hears how hot it is around here, she'll get back where she belongs. Not if Joe can help it. He's been in love with her since she was in pigtails. Is that so? Well, you know what they say happens to love when trouble knocks at the door? Yep. But don't forget, she's a chip off the old block. And no one ever scared the old man out. Hurry up! Get in! Thank you. 
Southern and mine, the cook and ten cowhands, all killed. Joe, it, it must have been a massacre. It was, Alice. Those rats didn't give any of them a chance. They just swooped down here that night and slaughtered... Dad sent me for the sheriff, but I, I couldn't find him. By the time I got back with some of the other ranchers, it was all over. But why, Joe? Dad never had any enemies. Everybody loved him. Who would do such a thing? Rustlers. That night and nearly every night since. They've been taking enough cattle off of our ranch to make it serious, Alice. Mighty serious. Oh. So that's why Mr. Wyatt wrote he was having difficulty keeping cow hands and had to send out a state for men. Yes, and I don't think much of the breed he's picked. Well, why not, Joe? Father must have trusted Mr. Wyatt or he never would have placed his estate, everything in his hands. Oh, don't pay any attention to me, Alice. I... I don't know. I guess I just miss all our old boys who are gone. You know, we had a swell crew. Like one big happy family. I guess I just can't get used to having strangers around. Joe, you have taken your father's place as foreman, haven't you? Well, not exactly, Alice. Uh, of course, I know more about the ranch than anybody else, so I just start a straw boss when Wyatt isn't here. Joe, there's something I want to talk to you about. Who's that? Well, Wyatt, I guess. He said he'd be over. Come in, Mr. Wyatt. Hello, Joe. Mr. Wyatt, Miss Borden. I'm glad to know my father's best friend, Mr. Wyatt. Well, well, after all the letters we've exchanged, Miss Ellis, I feel we're already good friends. <laughs> yes, we should be, shouldn't we? Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Joe and I have just been discussing the ranch. Oh, is that so? Uh, by the way, Joe, before I forget it, I saw the Lester Ranch over in Marion County today. The new man is offering top wages for a good first-class foreman. I spoke to him about you, and the job is yours if you want it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wyatt, but I've just hired Joe as my foreman. Does that mean, Miss Alice, you're not considering selling as I advised in my last letter? Sell a circle B. Just what did you have in mind, Mr. Wyatt? Judd Mason, your neighbor to the north, has made an offer. Naturally, considering the cattle losses you've taken, it's not very much. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be coming from that cheap, conniving old skin flint. Joe. You know, Judd Mason's got his eye on the water on this ranch because he hasn't got enough for his own spread. And he thinks because Alice here is a woman, he can wheedle her down to his own cheap size. Well, he's plumb local because I won't let him do it. Don't get excited, Joe. The Circle B is not for sale, Mr. Wyatt. Well, of course, it's your property, Miss Alice. But running the Circle B with all the trouble we've been having is a man-sized job. And, uh, we can handle it. You know, Wyatt, what we need around here is some action in bringing these rustlers to justice. Isn't anyone in authority doing anything, Mr. Wyatt? Why, Joe here knows I've been complaining to Sheriff Cox. No, Sheriff Cox. A lot of good it does to complain to him. Well, after all, he is the sheriff. Yes, and if I had my way about it, we'd run him out of town. Now, Joe, let's talk this over quietly. Hi, right, Woody. What do you want, stranger? Is there a lady around the ranch? Yeah. Up at the house. Thanks. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Oh, I'd like to talk to the lady, if you don't mind. Oh. Alice. How do you do? How do you do? What? Why, it's a baby. Oh. Isn't she cute, Joe? Uh-huh. It is a girl, isn't it? A gnome. Boy. Oh. 
You know, I, I'm awfully glad you like him because I promised him I'd turn him over to the first lady who took a liking to him. You know, I found him about 20 miles down the road here. His parents were both dead. They were shot. Shot? By whom? Well, from the looks of the place around there, lady, I'd, I'd say they were rustlers. Rustlers? Did you hear that, Wyatt? Yes. I did. You didn't happen to see any of those rustlers, did you, stranger? Well, no. My only concern is about this little shaver. I'd be mighty obliged to you, miss, if you'd kind of take care of him. Oh, the poor little thing. What do you say, Joe? Uh-huh. We'll keep him. Oh, thank you, miss. You've ridden a long ways. You must be hungry. Well, I, I could eat, but I better be riding. Joe, take him out to the chuck house and see that he gets some food. Oh, you shouldn't go to that bother, miss. Uh, Miss Borden's the boss here, stranger, and what she says goes. So I guess you're going to eat. Uh, besides, we got a new cook. Well, thank you, miss. So long, Shaver. trying to do poisonous what's going on here who called this man she a cook what now you listen to me you little nubbin i've cooked for cow outfits what is cow outfits and for cow hands what is cow hands not saddle hoggers why get out red what do you fellows think this is, a shooting gallery? Tastes pretty doggone good to me, in fact. It's perfect, chow. Who's this? None of your business, but the name's Bronson. All right, you fellows get going and relieve the boys on the North Range. Since when are you giving orders around here? Since Miss Alice made me foreman five minutes ago. Get going. See that this man gets a square meal, Sandy. Well, that'll be a pleasure, foreman. <laughs> hey, Doc, don't eat that. <laughs> One of them pole cats has been working on that. I'll get you a fresh bowl. Hey, is that stranger still around here? Yeah, in the chuck house. Say, what's that foreman stuff with Joe? I thought you was going to get rid of him. Huh? Wait. When you coming out again, Wyatt? Oh, I'll be out in a day or two. Good. I thought I told you boys to head for the North Range. All right, boss. See you later, Wyatt. All right. Listen, I want you boys to lay off that kid. You take his orders and like it, Savvy? Yep. Right. Hurry up and throw that in, do you? And I'll get you another bowl. Uh, I guess I'd better fetch a pail of water. Uh, wait a minute. Haven't I seen you before somewhere? Maybe. You don't happen to chew gum, do you? Gum? When I start chewing gum, I'll quit packing my guns. Uh, have you ever been around Bodie? Yeah, why? Ever seen me before? Yeah. Was up on the Bar T Ranch. I was one of the hands when you pulled that deal. Yeah, I guess that's where it must have been. But you sure look like someone else. Well, I'm sorry for that guy. 
I'm the owner of the Larrabee Land and Water Company. Suppose you come over and see me sometime. I want to talk to you. Maybe that's not so easy to do. Why? Someone looking for you? Maybe. I run things my way here in Larrabee. I'm a lawyer, too. Well, if you ever catch up with me, a lawyer won't do me any good. I'll try and be there this afternoon. Hey, Cookie, where's the bunkhouse? Right across the way, neighbor. Thanks. See you later. You know, Joe, I've been thinking. Did you notice the hunted look on that man's face? Who? The one who brought the baby. Oh, oh yeah, kind of. Oh, well, he can't be all bad, or he wouldn't have shown so much consideration for him. <laughs> Why, no, Miss Borden is. Oh, won't you come in? Thanks. My name is McCall, United States Marshal. Oh, how do you do, Marshal? This is Joe Martin, our foreman. How are you? I'm glad to know you. Don't uh, tell us we're finally getting some help in this rustling trouble we've been having around these parts. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm here. <laughs> won't you sit down, Marshal? No, I'm afraid I haven't time. I'm looking for a man. I... Yeah. Oh, what a cute baby. Why, oh, you little rascal. Ever see that fellow? No. Uh, no, we haven't, Marshal. Well, you might keep a lookout for him. I attack that poster up outside, if you don't mind. I'll see that it's posted, Marshal, after Joe's had a chance to show it to the boys on the range. Oh, thank you. I, well, I guess I better be riding along. <laughs> I'll make my headquarters at the sheriff's office at Larrabee, and I'd appreciate any cooperation you can give me. Fine. Good day, Miss Borden. Goodbye, Marshal. So long. Goodbye. Go get Bronson. Tell him I want to see him, but don't tell him why. Okay. He's the bravest little shaver you ever saw. Just got 20 miles without a squawk. Why, them low-down, killing pool cats. I never hear him tell on such goals. <laughs> but that little caper. You don't have to worry about him losing weight with me cooking for him. You got to do better than that concoction you tried out on me, or I'll make a pretzel out of your neck. <laughs> oh. Say, this fellow was just telling me about that little baby, Mr. Foreman. <laughs> you know, them young'uns is right up my creek. You don't have to worry none about him with me being around, because uh, I brought him later. up from... Tell me later, Sandy. Miss Borden wants to see you. You'd better come along. All right. Oh, maybe you're going to get a job. You wanted to talk to me, miss? We had a visitor just now, a man named McCall, a United States Marshal. He uh, gave us this and asked us to post it. $500 is a lot of money. It isn't every one that'd pass that up. And it isn't every bandit that'd show so much consideration for a child. But just because a man is wanted doesn't necessarily mean he's bad. You can thank Miss Borden for giving you a break, stranger. Now I'd suggest you clear out. 
and clear out pronto. Thanks. I will. Oh, by the way, as long as there's a United States Marshal hanging around, you might as well give him this. It was written by little Shaver's mother just before she died. Thanks again, and goodbye. It identifies one of the rustlers. Yeah. I'm going after that marshal. Say, marshal! What is it? Pete and Mary Gibbs, who have got a little spread just north of us, were killed last night. Mrs. Gibbs managed to write that note before she died. Hmm. You know this fellow Bill Cook? No, but if Mrs. Gibbs recognized him, somebody in Larrabee ought to be able to identify him. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought it to my attention. I'll get right on it. Let me know if I can be any help. I will. Are you Sheriff Cox? No. What do you mean, stranger, coming around here scaring a fellow most out of his eyes? <laughs> I didn't know people around here scared so easily. No? Well, maybe we got things to be scared of. Not from my direction. Yeah. Where's Cox? Going home to eat. In the middle of the afternoon? Yep. If you know the sheriff, he eats one meal a day, and that's continuous. Must be a pretty busy man. Say, uh... Do you know a fellow around here by the name of Bill Cook? Yeah, he rides for Judd Mason. Just saw him ride in with Judd and some of the boys. Where'd they go? Uh, guess over the saloon. Didn't notice. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. Wyatt hasn't got back from the boarding place yet. We'll wait. You better get back to the canyon, Steve, and move that Gibbs cattle. I'm handling things out there, Mason. I'll do them my way. That's right. Who might you be? McCall, the United States Marshal. A Marshal for Larrabee, eh? Well, ain't that swell. How about treating the Marshal to a drink? Sure. What do you say? Yeah, I'll join you. What do you have, Marshal? Lemonade. A lemonade, Marshal, huh? Well, suppose we all have lemonade. Well, we ain't got that many lemons in the whole state. Never mind, Al. Fix the marshal up. And give the boys what they want. That all right with you, marshal? All right with me. Well, what are you gonna have, cook? Whiskey, straight. Where are you from, marshal? Just came down from the penitentiary. Saw him hang a man I brought in there. You ever see a man hanged? No, I don't want to. Well, it's not a pretty sight. Especially if the fellow's yellow. This one was. He killed a man and his wife. Yeah? Shot them both in the back. He was supposed to be tough. One of these two gunmen. 
But when he saw that scaffold, he broke down and cried like a baby. It took two guards to drag him up those 13 steps. And when they got ready to put the noose on his neck, he fainted. Yeah. Couldn't take it. He didn't even know it when they put the black hood over his head and stood him on the trap door. When they sprung the trap, it cracked his neck like that. Of course, then they just left him hanging there until the prison doctor pronounced him dead. That's what happens to men that commit murder. And that's what's going to happen to you, Cook, for murdering Pete Gibbs and his wife. Oh, no, it's not. One move and I'll let you have it. Well, you can't prove Bill did that, Kevin. Get out of my way. got nothing on me. Nothing on you. I'll say I have. If you're not careful, I'll drag you into town with it. Now get aboard your horse. Mr. Wyatt, I'm going to the post office. All right, go ahead. idea of coming in this way. I told you I ran things my way in this town. Yeah, and I think a lot of my neck, too. Come on in and sit down. off a tree on my way in. Bodhi Bronson, huh? That's right. Uh, I knew I had your tag, but I couldn't remember the name. Well, that mug plastered all over the country is going to be quite a help, isn't it? Yeah. What's on your mind? I got big things on my mind. I could use you. Pull up a chair and sit down. Here's the deal. You can take care of that. Now, here are my credentials. Lock this all up. You ain't gonna be taking his word for this crazy thing, are you, Sheriff? Well, I... Now, look here, McCall, you can't just lock up a man without any evidence. Since when? You lock him up, we'll talk about the evidence later. Where are you gonna get the evidence, out of your hat? No, out of my pocket. Mary Gibbs wrote this before she died. And I'm keeping it in my pocket till it's time to show it to the judge. Come on. You see to it that this fellow's here when I want him, Sheriff. Gibbs wrote it before she died. Yeah, I think he's bluffing. Come on, open up and let me out of here. Well, I can't do that. There's no way. That well, I... you better be finding a way and finding it quick. You yellow rat. I'll, I'll talk to Wyatt. And don't lose any time about it. And so, no matter what happens, I'm pinning the blame on Bodie Bronson. That's swell. Take it easy. I'll see who it is.
United States Marshal just arrested Bill Cook for murdering Pete Gibbs and his wife. What? Well, why? Glad you're here too, Mason. Do you know what? The United States Marshal. I know all about it. Come on in here. Who's he? That's Bodie Bronson. Bodie Bronson? Bronson. Bodie, this is Sheriff Cox. This is my partner, Judd Mason. Aye, Sheriff. Aye. Hi, Mason. Hi. Right. From the excitement around here, it kind of looks like you need a new range, boss. Who's this fellow, Bill Cook? Yeah, what are you going to do about him? Uh, the blockhead getting himself messed up like this. Yes, and that marshal's got a paper in his pocket that he says Mary Gibbs wrote before she died. What? Yeah. Must be she identified Bill, but the, the marshal won't say yet. Bill thinks he's bluffing. He don't look like the bluffing kind to me. Gibbs. Weren't they the parents of that baby I found? That's right. And what about that paper? How did you come to miss that? With every sheriff and marshal in the country looking for me, you think I'm sap enough to stop for a piece of paper that doesn't concern me? The only reason the call is out here is on my trail. Yeah, that's right. I, I got excited about that paper on account of the kid situation. Forget it. Yeah, well, what about this kid? Never mind that. From now on, Bodie here is bossing this range. And everything that happens around here is going to be laid to him. Uh, but what about Steve? He ain't going to like it. You take orders from Bodie and like it. You get word to him that I said so. Now get going and turn the men over to him. So long. Say, uh, how, how about Bill Cook? He'll talk plenty. You know what to do about that. And do it tonight. Yeah, uh, all right. Is that the Gibbs cattle? Yeah. They only had a handful. Come on, let's get to camp. Hi, Steve. Hi. You all right? Sure. Say that the marshal good, Bill? Yeah, and Wyatt don't like it. Oh, he's old, huh? What's your name? My name's Bob Bronson. They call me Bodie. Oh, yeah. I've heard of you. That's right. I'm taking over here. You know what? You heard me. And we're going to do things a little differently, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And we're starting in by not wasting our time murdering people over a handful of scrawny steers. Well, I don't... this outfit. Aren't you cooled off yet? You be sure you're going when I come back, because I don't know nothing about it, see? I'll be gone. Here's your gun. Drop that rifle in that six-shooter. Get out of here if you know what's healthy for you.
Who are you? Why accept me? Drop on that horse. Let's get out of here. See you in the morning, Graham. All right, Mr. Wyatt. I'll be down early. Good evening. Evening. Say, you're Marshal McCall, aren't you? That's right. I'm Wyatt. How are you? Sheriff Cox is telling me that you're down here to clean up these rustlers. Well, that's part of my job. Well, I'm mighty glad to hear that, because I represent the Gordon Ranch, and we've been losing plenty of stock lately. Just how do you represent them? Well, when old man Borden was killed by the rustlers, I took over the handling of his affairs for his daughter. Oh. You know, I've been talking to some of the ranchers around this part of the country, and they seem to think there's more behind this thing than just plain rustling. Could be that someone's trying to freeze out these landholders in order to get a hold of, well, valuable water rights. What do you think of it? I've been talking to them, too, but personally, I don't think there's anything to it. Why? Oh, of course, a few of the ranchers have lost their spreads through foreclosure. But Marshal, I've been in this town a long time, and I don't know anyone dishonest enough or even crazy enough to think they could pull anything like that. Well, I've known some men to try to cash in on being crazy. Hey, Marshal, I've been looking all over for you. What's up? Bill Cook's escaped. Escaped? Yeah, somebody must have slipped him a saw when I went out to supper. When I come back, he's gone clean through them window bars. How did it happen? Well, Bodie Bronson messed things up. What's the idea of hiring a range boss like that? Why, he'd hang any one of us for no reason at all. Listen, he's the kind of a range boss I want. Trouble with you is that you're going yellow. Now get out and watch that marshal. Yes. Cook worked for Mason, didn't he? Yeah, but Judd Mason's on the level, one of our best citizens. Doesn't his place join the Borden Ranch? Yeah. Does he ever do business with Wyatt? Well, yeah, sure. Wyatt handles most of the land deals around here. Uh-huh. Well, you'll be getting a new set of bars in there because you're going to need them. Here. Tom Nelson just told me he's got his whole herd in Baldy Basin, ready to drive out day after tomorrow. He thinks he can beat the rustlers. So Nelson won't sell, huh? Day after tomorrow, you said? Yeah. It'll be a cinch to run him off tonight when Nelson's a short-handed. Why, he won't have more than a couple of men guarding the herd. Yeah. I'm riding out now to give Bodie his orders. Meet me here tomorrow morning. All right. That you start counting more. 
thinking, goodness, I, I'm supposed to be helping Sandy make out a shopping list for the baby. I, um... Mr. Bronson, he's got someone with him. Hi, fellas. Hi. Well, what's the matter? You look as though you're seeing a ghost. How'd you get out? You don't think I'm gonna let a dumb marshal keep a good man of mine in jail, do you? Where's Steve? Said he was running a batch of steers off the board and range tonight. Those weren't my orders. Yeah, we know, but Steve's plan, he said he was going through with it. And that includes getting rid of that kid, Joe Martin. Said he's gonna attack the killing on you. My plans were to leave the board and cattle go for the last deal. Where'd he go? North Corral of the board and range. Boy, is he sore. Sure, now that'll be enough to run him oh, for a couple of... Something funny's going on at the North Range. I saw some strange riders, two of them heading across the creek. I could swear that one of them was Bodie Bronson. I'll be right with you, Red. Bodie Bronson? Joe, you don't suppose he's one of the rustlers? If he is, he won't live to brag about it. Joe, do be careful. Don't worry, honey, I'll be all right. He will, because I'm going with him. No, you're not. You're going to stay here and keep an eye on Alice and the baby. Come on, Red. You fellas hide out here. We'll pick up the cattle after I take care of the kid. together, huh? What a rat you are, Bodie. I knew I should have turned you over to the marshal. Now that you've had your little say, Joe, I suggest you get back to the ranch where you belong. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy for you around here. All right, Bodie, but you're not bluffing me. We'll take this up later. Sandy, he's been hurt. Shot. Shot? I didn't hear no shooting. How'd you get here? Sandy, Sandy, we've got to do something. Sandy, take it easy, Miss. He'll come around all right. Get him inside. Steady now. Oh, be careful. Now, here, Take her steady, Sandy. Joe. 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 Steady. Steady as she goes. How did I get here? Found you out on the porch. Sandy, you get into town for a doctor. Hurry. I'll do what I can in the meantime. Find that United States Marshal while you're in town and tell him what happened. We're gonna get that guy in his mob this time. We have to comb every rock and gully in the country. All right, son. Now get her done. 
Was it Bodie Bronson? Oh, of course it was. I caught him at the gate. He got the drop on me as I turned to leave. He let me have it. You said, Bodie, Ed and Gus and me thought we'd use our own heads. So we rounded up another 200 off a of Tanner place. Went into Red here and the other boys coming with the boarding bunch. Yeah? What become of Steve? He went to town to see Wyatt. Well, boys, I got some good news for you. Where's Steve? He just went into town to have a talk with you. What for? He picked up some of the boarding cattle against my orders. And shot Martin, figuring to blame it on me. Well, don't you worry about Steve. I'll take care of him when I get back to town. But get this. Tom Nelson has his whole herd rounded up in Baldy Basin. He's going to start his drive the day after tomorrow. I want those cattle stampeded toward the border tonight. You can't do that. You've got to wait till sunup. Why? I told you I had an engagement with Gonzales. He's the fellow that's going to take those cattle from us. And give us a dollar ahead more, huh? That's right. I got a date with him tonight across the line. I figure we can get those cattle to him and be back by son. We're ready for that stampede. That's it, of course. It ain't smart to let a cattle pile up on us like that. I think I'll go with you tonight. I'd like to meet this Gonzales. Not a bad idea. I might not be here all the time, and you might want to carry on with him. Sure. Say, boss, what about Steve? He's pretty sore being out of things. You let me worry about that. I'll take care of him. Where's what? Well, I don't know. He was gone when I got back. What are you so high about? Why, well, it's crazy if he thinks he could double-cross me by putting Bodie Bronson over me. I bossed all the jobs that brought that gold in here, and I'm going to keep on bossing them. Now, I'd move easy if I were you, Steve. We broke Bill Cook out of jail tonight, and the new marshal doesn't like it. That makes things plenty hot around here. Oh, it does, huh? And besides, McCall is one of the best marshals in the West. Awful fast on his guns, they tell me. Say, listen, they don't come too fast for me. I'm going to find Wyatt. All right. Seen Wyatt around? No. Give me a drink. What are you burning about? Plenty. Has Wyatt been in here tonight? Nope, I haven't seen him. So you're the guy that's going to bring law and order to Larrabee. That's right. Well, you ain't starting out so good, are you? Letting Bill Cook run out on you. You seem to know a lot about Cook, don't you? Maybe some of the things I want to know. Well, you can tell them to me down at the jail, because that's where you're going right now. Oh, no, I'm not. Now the marshal's after me. Well, wait a minute, Steve. I ain't waiting for nobody. Put out that light. Light that light. What's going on here? That's one of that gang we've caught up with. Steve Dunn. Why, well, I can't believe it. What happened, Marshal? You're the United States Marshal, aren't you? Yes, that's right. 
Well, I'm the cook out with the boarding outfit. Young Joe Martin was shot tonight trying to stop some rustlers that are working on the Circle B's North Range. You've got to warn Wyatt. He's out at the hideout. I can't go now. Well, I, I can't ride. Then walk, but get to him. Well, all right. Does he know who the men were? Certain sure. It was that low-down Bronson critter. I've just sent the doctor out to take care of Joe. You tell young Martin I'm calling a meeting of all the ranchers at the Circle B at sunup. We'll form a posse and go after this Bronson and his friends. Well, you got any idea who his friends are, Marshal? Well, I'll know by sunup. I'll tell Joe about the meeting. Well, sure, going along, aren't you, Sheriff? You can notify some of the ranchers. Yeah, I'll get my horse. See you in the morning, Marshal. Right, at sunup. Zolly's will pay a fancy price for that beef. Yeah, he did all right with that bunch last night. Bodie, within a week, Tom Nelson will be begging me to buy his ranch at my price. That's right. Well, get busy and stampede him, and I'll get this gold into town. Meet you at the hideout at noon, huh? Come on, boys. It's a pretty good herd there. We're gonna pull this one without any killing. I want you to take these cattle pretty fast out of this section and slow them down, do you understand? You're the boss. Get them going. And that's what we're selling. Slow them down. The way I figure this thing. All of you ranchers have been urged by Wyatt to sell out. That is all but Mason here. So I'm convinced that Wyatt's at the bottom of all your troubles. It isn't your cattle he's after. It's your land and water rights. Yeah. Why, I can see it now. And it's mighty peculiar that Mason here was the one Wyatt said wanted to buy our spread. Well, uh, I don't know nothing about it. And that's taking in a lot of territory, kid. And I think you're accusing a Wyatt of something you can't prove, Marshal. Yeah, and ain't you forgetting this Bodie Bronson, hombre? Joe said he saw him last night. Yes, and I say Wyatt hired Bronson and his guns, just like he's packed our ranch with his hired killers. Why didn't one of them deliberately take me out to that trap last night expecting to get rid of me? That still ain't no proof against Wyatt. I never make any claims I can't prove. I've organized this citizen's posse so you'll have a chance of learning firsthand that Wyatt's in this up to his neck, along with Bodie Bronson. Come on. All right, Marshal. You, uh, fellows are coming along, aren't you, Mason? Naturally. He wouldn't want to lose a chance to prove to himself that Wyatt almost got him into serious trouble, would you, Mason? Joe, you can't go with that shoulder. I'll be all right, honey. This is important, and I've got to be there. We can round them up in three days and get them across the border to Gonzales. That's right. Nice looking herd, isn't it? Yeah. In the meantime, we better ride up the hideout and get a little rest before Wyatt shows up. Come on. Crane! There's trouble, Wyatt. And a plenty. I'm working with Bodie. 
I've been out watching things for him at the Borden Ranch. And that United States Marshal is telling all the ranchers that you're behind us and the rustling. How does he know? I don't know, but he says he's going to prove it. He's got Mason and Cox corralled, and that whole bunch is on their way in here from the Circle B. They must have got Crane last night and he squealed. I don't know, but we've got to hide him out of here and tip off Bodie. Right here. Take this. Stephen Wyatt's office last night, and I've been walking ever since. What's wrong? Everything. The marshal's boys, we've got to get out of here. They've got a posse out looking for us. You told me to tip you off, Bodie. They've all left the Circle B, and they've got Mason and Cox on the spot. And if you ask me, they're going to squawk their heads off. We can make the border in a couple of hours. That'd be crazy. That's right where they'd head for. I've got a place I've been hanging out in for three years. They'll never find us there. Come on. That's right. Look around. Are you chewing gum? Yeah. I knew I had you pegged. You're Marshal Roberts, aren't you? That's right. It's been a long time, huh? Yeah. About ten years. Remember? The penitentiary I turned you over to the warden. You're pretty smart with that Bodie Bronson stuff. I thought you'd fall for that. There you are. You can take care of these. And to think the three of you were working together all along. Gosh, Mr. Roberts, I... Well, I don't know what to say about it after the way I've treated you. I... Oh, forget it. Well, you know, Alice and I were thinking about that little shaver. Hey, there are a lot of people trying to put their brands on that little shaver. Come on, take him out of here. All right, drop your guns, you pass me. I've got a roundup of my own running up at the ranch. And I hope Bat Madison doesn't send for us again until that work's finished. And I'm heading back for Texas. I'm going to marry that witty this time or bust. <laughs> Say, what do you mean sending word to me right when I'm within three foot of the altar and that preacher? Say, by the way, Buck, what do you figure on doing? Well, I, I don't know. Say, how about me putting my brand on that little shaver? You know, my witty is cotton right well to him. Hey, if you got any designs on that little baby, you get them off. Well, you fellas can stay right here and fight about that little maverick as long as you want to. I'm heading back for Wyoming. So long, Rough Riders. So long, Rough Riders. So long, Rough Riders. Rough Riders ride. Beware. Rough Riders ride. Think there. Oh, 
always waiting on their on your side. When all those rough riders ride. 